Welcome to day two of Affiliate Summit East in New York City, as we all know. My name is Jim Kukrell, and I'll be doing a few announcements before we bring up our keynote speaker. So settle in, relax, and uh, be prepared to hear about some amazing SEO strategies. So a couple quick announcements before we move on. There is free Wi-Fi in the keynotes in, the, in here, in the break, breakout sessions, and in the dining and networking area. The uh, password is ASC11, and of course, just connect to the Affiliate Summit. You can follow ASC11 and Affiliate Summit on Twitter for news, promo, networking, and all kinds of things. I like to follow the hashtag ASC11 to see what's going on and where people are and things like that. Now, this is really neat. You can check in at the Affiliate Summit East with um, Foursquare and Gowalla, and they have some really cool promotions that are actually going on with that as well. Um, and actually, there's some signs that are going around. Uh, you can scan your QR codes and a lot of things happening with, with the Hilton Hotel as well. So definitely something to check in with. Now, this is really neat. Affiliate Summit West in January 8th to 10th will be at Caesars Palace this year. So if you haven't been to Vegas and you want to go do the hangover experience at, at Caesars Palace in January, I highly suggest you get a ticket. Um, registration is open today. And of course, if you register sooner than later, you get better discounts. And then you don't want to be one of those people who waited to the last minute to get a ticket for this one who ended up having to buy it on eBay for twice the price. So uh, it really behooves you to go and get a ticket early. Very, very important. And I know this is the really boring part of when you're in a session. The feedback, the feedback is really, really important to the show. The reason the show gets better and better every year is because the speakers get better and better because of the feedback that you give. It's very simple. When you're walking into a session, they hand you one of those forms. Please, 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 just take a moment and fill it out and just leave it on the table or hand it to the person on the way out so that we can make sure we have the speakers here that you want to see and it can help help everyone out. Now, 10 people every day, starting today, are gonna win a gold pass to Affiliate Summit at Caesars Palace. So, they're gonna pick 10 random people who fill out the feedback forms today. So if you're going to five sessions today, or four sessions, however many there are, fill it out four times and you've got a, a much better chance of winning a free pass to the show in Vegas. The Affiliate Summit Forum is available and I think it's something that everybody should take part of. There's uh, plenty of people in there talking about affiliate marketing every single day. And it's just at forum.affiliatesummit.com. Uh, free to get in and chat with other people in the industry. It, it's a great way to keep the connections going after the show or during the show for the next six months before we all get together and see each other again. So check it out at forum.affiliatesummit.com. The questions when you're in the sessions, they're doing something neat. They did this last time and it really worked out well. You can put your questions in via text, tweet, or an online form. And I believe those instructions are in the room. Yeah. Yeah, they're working for every session. So just uh, listen to the, the moderator or the person, the panel or the speaker, and they'll give you instructions how to do that. So if you don't have anything to do tonight, we are having the affiliate karaoke tonight at 9 o'clock to midnight in the Mercury Ballroom, which I believe is just around the corner. So um, come out tonight, sing some songs, you know, embarrass yourself a little bit maybe. It's going to be a good time. So this is the largest Affiliate Summit East to date with 3,943 attendees. So um, thank you for everybody who, sh who showed up for this event. It's, it's growing and growing and it just keeps getting bigger every single time. And, and that's a testament to Sean and Missy and, and the staff and everybody who's done such a great job and the speakers and everybody. So thank you so much and um, let's make it bigger and bigger as we can. Now, now to the good stuff, why y'all came here today. So over the past 13 years, Will Reynolds has dedicated himself to doing two things well driving traffic to sites from search engines and analyzing the impact that traffic has on the bottom line of companies. Will's career began at, web, at a web marketing agency in 1999, where he spearheaded the SEO strategies for companies like Barnes & Noble, Disney, Harman Kardon, De Beers, DoubleClick, Hot Jobs, and Mercedes-Benz. For the last six years, Will, Will and the team of the search professionals at Sear Interactive have been assisting clients in maximizing their visibility and sales using search engines in both SEO and SEM. 
You can watch Will speaking with anyone who wants to learn about search, whether it's in a coffee shop or at a major conference. It just runs through his veins. His goal at every speaking engagement is simple. Make sure everyone walks out with, one, with at least one piece of information or perspective on an SEO topic, so you can hold him to that. Will's sessions at previous affiliate summits were routinely rated as the best by conference attendees. So that is the official introduction of Will. I will just say that uh, I've known Will for uh, many years now, and not only being a great person, he is most likely the most knowledgeable person I've ever met in terms of search engine marketing and search engine optimization. Um, he's a great guy, and he's a, a great speaker. I think you're going to really enjoy him. So let's bring him up. Will Reynolds. Oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> All right, um, so thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is a long stage and I like to walk, so I'll get my workout that I, that I skipped out on this morning. Um, so the title speaks for itself. Um, whatever your bleep wants to be, right? It could be freaking, it could be worse. Um, but I wanna to talk today about let's stop taking shortcuts. You know, um, I'm a guy that like loves the Panda update. Like many people here hated the Panda update. I love the Panda update because a lot of the crap that people put on the web stopped showing up in my results. So I found stuff I actually wanted. Sorry about that for those of you that got hit by Panda. Um, but it's true, right? So I want everybody here to think about a mentor. You know, think about somebody who you admire, right? In the business world, maybe. Um, think about that person. Like seriously, just like take a second. Think about somebody who you look up to. Um, it could be a real superhero, like Aquaman, right? It could be a douchier hero, like Donald Trump. <laughs> it could be a regular hero, like your mother. But I'm going to ask you to think for a second about their journey. Think about the words you would think of when you think about someone whom you admire. Think about their journey. If somebody asked you to use five words to describe their journey, you tell me. What words would you use? Would they be words like these? I know you four-hour work week people. I think that's bullshit. If you want to work four hours a week, I'm going to work 40. I'm probably going to have a slightly more better understanding of an industry if I try to work 40 hours a week instead of four. Doesn't mean I don't maximize my time. It just means that I love my job, so therefore I'm going to work a lot harder at it. Four hours a week, what would I do with the other 60 hours? Any of your heroes ever build a business sculpting page rank or article spinning? Like, seriously, your heroes, like people that you look up to, the Mark Cubans of the world, or the Bill Gates of the world, or the Zuckerbergs, or the Evs, or whomever it is that you look up to, your mom, Aquaman, whoever it is, you never hear about your heroes sculpting page rank or article spinning, right? Good, hope so. I think what happens, guys, is we fall in love with what's easy. You know, we all think that we're going to do our four-hour work week from here, right? We're going to sit on our hammock, and there's going to be, uh, you can't see them in the, in the distance, but there's uh, young ladies in bikinis serving drinks, and the guy only checks in for a half hour every day and makes millions of dollars, right? Today, I want to challenge that kind of thinking. I want you guys today to fall in love with the things that are actually hard as a way to sustain your, your business. And I think it starts a little bit with a story about how I even ended up on this stage. So these guys, you know them well, <laughs> found that one. Hey, at least somebody in there is a star. Um, dig. Um, but no, so it starts, it starts with these guys. Um, and I'm forever thankful to, to Sean and Missy um, because that's how I ended up here. So in 99, when I started doing SEO, um, through about 2005, I was working on SEO, working on huge brands, and you heard them all. And I thought that I had something to offer. One, I'm a... Uh, I went to school to be a teacher, so I tend to hopefully be able to explain complicated things. I went to school to be an economics teacher. So my goal in life was to teach kids how the day-to-day -day of economics impacts their lives. Um, so I like taking complicated ideas and breaking them down in a way that people can more easily understand. And I thought I was getting pretty good at this. Now this was kind of before blogs, so this was mostly hanging out in forums and things like that. But I knew I was adding value. 
and I kept asking, you know, SES or whomever, hey, I think I'm on to something here with this search thing. I've been working with big brands, been doing it for about six years. May I please come to your conference and speak? And, you know, it was no response. You know, we're not going to even, we're not going to even respond to you. And, um, and what was great is back in 05, at the affiliate summit in Vegas, these guys gave me a shot. They gave me a shot, right? And um, the really bad part about the way that that went down is about two days before I was supposed to fly out to Vegas, I was sitting in the airport with extreme chest pains. Um, pretty bad, and I, I got a pretty high tolerance for pain. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to the airport anyway. And I'm sitting there and I call my mother and I said, uh, I said, mom, uh, do you think I should maybe not go on this flight? She said, probably not. So I went to the hospital, they admitted me. I ended up having um, some kind of bruise on my chest that actually got like, pretty deep in as a result of a mountain biking accident a couple days before. So I was sitting in the hospital like, you guys have to release me within a day because I've got to be able to make it to the affiliate summit um, in Vegas because it was a great opportunity to speak to a couple, to speak to some, a small group of folks. And I was only speaking to about 18 people when I was there. I did round tables, maybe it was about six or seven small round tables back in 05. And it became this, right? And it comes back to just hard work. This is my 12th affiliate summit that I've been speaking at. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I think, I think um, one of the things that I, I like is the feedback that I get um, where people actually think that I'm going to do the same presentation once in a while. So people go, oh, I skipped your presentation because I thought it would be like the same thing you did back east. And I challenge myself every time, right? I could take the easy way. And I could use a presentation that I used west for east. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, if anybody's doing that. Um, but I like to take the hard way, right? And by taking the hard way, I think it's part of the reason why I ended up on the stage today. So, with that story said, I want to talk to you guys about something I'm really sick of. And hopefully some of you guys are getting sick of it too. I'm sick of people taking shortcuts on the web and winning. So my goal today is to arm you with some tactics you can use to beat their asses by just working a little bit harder than them, right? That's the goal today. So you know, you have these like black hat type people and they, and they do things like spin articles and build a whole business off of that. And they tell you that that's an awesome thing to do. Um, I'm gonna give you some, some ways or some tactics to maybe not get your ass whooped by these guys. But I do wanna start by giving you some really devious examples of ways that people are, are getting links in .edu. So all of us pretty much know if I can get a link from a .edu, probably has some level of value. Let me show you some of the crap that people do. So if you find a ticket, the ticketing system, you know, when your computer breaks or something like that, a lot of .edu's use the same system. If you search for them on Google, you can see the footprint, you can submit a ticket with your anchor text, and you build links to that crappy page, and now you've got anchor text links from a .edu. It looks something like this. Ooh, awesome, this was some research I was doing. Somebody submitted a ticket called tarot reading. Come on now, right? And there's a link in that little blue box that I shaded out so that people don't try to figure out what this all was. Um, it says tarot reading with the link. That's how a lot of people are building links. That's how a lot of people, maybe some of you out here, are building links today. And I want you to stop that, right? People are using CMSs or wikis on .edu's, going in, editing them, and embedding their links. Let me show you an example. Awesome. This looks like quality content to me, right? And I'm not that guy that's like, just build quality content. We're gonna get to the good stuff later, trust me. I'll show you how to get good, actual quality content without just saying it. But this is how people are getting links from .edu's. And I found that it actually sometimes works, which is really the sad part, right? Is it our fault or is it Google's? So one day I got a call from a guy who I swear looked a lot like this. Um, and, and he called me and said, I got a bunch of links that you might be interested in on some .edu's. And I said, oh, I like .edu links, but what I knew is that this guy was full of crap. I knew these weren't gonna be quality, but I took the call anyway. Why? Because I wanna know what the low quality black hats are doing. So how else am I gonna figure it out if I don't give this guy five minutes of my time to take the call? Look at what we have here. Awesome. It's a .edu page with so many words linked in it, I had to block them all out so that you guys don't go and try to Google it and find this guy, because I want to put him out of business, not put him in business. Remember, no shortcuts, so don't go trying to figure out the three words in there and Google them to find the network and buy your links. I will hunt you down and beat you if you do that, and I will. So, you're looking at an accounting club, an accounting club linking out to shoe polish, direct TV, moving companies, Psychics, you know, the things that accounting clubs are typically freaking talking about. 
but it's there. And somebody, there's an incentive for it to be there. So people are buying the links there. Is that what you want to do? No. But if you want to hit your numbers, might you do it? Yes. So I'm going to start showing you guys some ways to get those same links without being such a douchebag. And it's working, so you can't deny. So when people tell you, oh, don't go buy links, the, the, the crappy part about that, that statement is when you look at all the people that are buying links and outranking you, you're like, well, so I'm following your rules, but it's not helping me at all, right? So when Google says don't buy links, um, you know, I, I'm not saying you should, because I'm going to show you ways to battle without buying the links, but it's really kind of hard to say, well, don't buy the links, but they totally work, and you're at number 15 instead of number five, because we haven't really figured out for the people that are buying links how to get them out of there, right? So that's a really bad position for you guys to be in. So my thinking was, how do I get .edu links, right, in a way that I don't feel like I'm polluting the web? And I want to do it in a more angelic way, like the Luke Skywalker way of trying to beat the dark side, right? I want to be that like, young kid who's not all like, you know, got the grudges and the anger over the years of doing SEO. I want to look at this with a set of new fresh eyes, like it's a brand new day, right? So it sparked an idea for me. And this, these are things that I'm going to recommend that you guys do. By the way, all the links that I have in my presentation are, um, are I just, I think it was the last tweet that I sent out. So um, and my Twitter handle is just Will Reynolds with one L, uh, W-I-L-R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. So all the links you're going to see in this presentation, I have them all there for you, so you don't have to worry about trying to write them all down because I talk really fast. Um, so one of my clients sells snowboards. They're getting beat by people buying crappy .edu links. How about I talk to them, get them to give me a couple of snowboards that I can give away to some, some .edu's snowboarding clubs, right? To find a way to then have them link over to us. I'm doing a giveaway, I'm doing a promotion. You're raising money, you're fundraising. Great, how about we give you a prize? You link out to all the people that donated prizes. Boom, got a, got a .edu link in a quality way. Does that make sense? It's an easy way, so why are you guys taking shortcuts? Why are you taking the easy way out and buying links and crap networks or doing really low quality articles when you could actually, I don't know, add some value to the web? Wine clubs, so one of our clients, uh, they're in the wine business and they're really well known. So they've got sommeliers and all this, and, you know, they've got uh, chemists and all kinds of people that can talk to this. So what I want to show you guys is some searches you can do when you have a real asset or something of real value that can help you build links from EDUs and things like that in a much more higher quality way. So, not to be too depressing, but it's the summer so nobody's getting injured snowboarding just yet. Um, people that snowboard get injured. Um, a real good friend of mine uh, had a friend that was in a snowmobiling video. Met the guy at a fundraiser where he, after he had broken his neck and they were raising funds to help him get back on his feet, literally. And, um, and I guess when you're in that, in that world, you don't have health insurance. You know, after you've already broken your back once, and you've broken a leg twice, and you've broken an arm a couple times, they start going, yeah, we're not giving you insurance. So then these guys that love this lifestyle end up basically being like, if I get hurt again, I'm screwed. So and it's amazing to watch. Anybody here like a big time, not a big time snowboarder, but have friends that are like big time in the like winter sports snowboarding, snowmobiling? Isn't it amazing to see when somebody gets hurt how the whole community comes together to help raise funds? Now, you gotta realize I'm an opportunist, right? So I see links in everything, everything. Like my world is just like, I just see links. Like this whole room is like one big link, right? So unfortunately, because I think that way, even sometimes in, in moments of tragedy, I, uh, I think, well, okay, how can I do something that I still feel good about, but I need links. So my client is actually working right now on putting together like a sponsorship packet for people that are looking to raise funds for their friends in a way where they are the facility for that to happen. So every time somebody gets injured that's been snowboarding, or snowmobiling, they're gonna use their platform to figure out and to use like, well, how do you raise money? What kind of bands can you get? What kind of bands will support this? All that, we're putting all that together into a resource. Great way to build links, right? A Lot of kids at college are, these ty are this type of demographic. What college snowboarding club wouldn't support a company who's trying to help other people raise funds when their friends get hurt or injured when they're snowboarding, right? So for my wine client, here's an example of a search that I did. It's a little bit of an advanced query, so we'll go through it and I'll break it down so that you guys can go do this for yourselves afterwards. So you see where it says in title? Um, what, all I'm saying, let's see how well this works. Yeah, it works pretty well. So all I'm saying is, you know, this is the title, and then that's the title, and then that's the title. It's the title of the, uh, of the, of the web page. So 
I'm saying in the title, I want the word viticulture and course, right? I want to make sure this page is really about viticulture, the study of wine, which many people studied a lot of last night, which is why people are coming in a little bit late, and that's okay. I won't take it personally. I just want to answer your questions later. I got my eye on you. All right, so, and then I did space, and then I did site colon, and then I did dot edu. So what I'm telling Google is only when somebody's using the word viticulture or, and course, and it's on a dot edu, do I want to see that result, right? So now what am I getting? Look at what I'm getting. I'm getting all of the coursework on all of the .edu's related to viticulture. What I think is really interesting is notice how Google's matching the word class to course, right? So these are things that you should be looking out for when you're looking at the search results. Because sometimes when you're doing keyword research and you go, well, am I going to call it this or that? Look at what Google's matching as a synonym, because sometimes you might not need to do both of them. Let's dig in a little bit deeper. So here's one of the pages that showed up on that search. Awesomeness, there are links everywhere here. Let me break them down. First one, boom, got a professor, awesome. The guy's in Google Scholar. How many of you can get links out of Google Scholar? Not easy. Talking to professors, great way to do it, right? How about I find other professors that are also in Google Scholar and create a focus group? Ask them questions. What is it that you would want to see? What would you link to? How could a big company like my wine company help you get information that would help you with your curriculum? Can I give you red and white wine glasses so that you can actually teach your, teach your students how the, uh, how the wine aerates differently between the two if you were to pour red into a white glass? Right? Helpful? Valuable? If I was teaching a wine class, which would be awesome, um, then I, I'd be like, yeah, give, me this, get, give this to me, right? I don't have to, I, you're, you're helping me do less work. Talk about the four-hour work week. Professors love that four-hour work week stuff. So the more you send to them, the less work they have to do, the more likely they are to link to you, right? That's just one way of three that I will show you about how to take advantage of this opportunity. Wine club, awesome. Wine club at college. The one class I would have gone to if they had that at the University of Delaware, but they didn't. Um, so I have a wine club, great. Wine club, again, it's a club. It's easy to sponsor them. It's easy to give them things in giveaways and promotions, right? Heck, I'll get into this in a little bit. You could create a freaking scholarship. We'll talk about that in a second. Third one, boom, jobs, awesome. My client has jobs, sweet. EDU, let me post the jobs on this uh, uc, uh, UC davis.edu page and got my links there. Three ways to get links, all quality, all .edu, and you don't feel like a douchebag by getting them, right? So I want you guys, I'm giving you guys that example to talk about how we're going to strike back how we're gonna actually invest time to beat people who are taking shortcuts and beating you today. It's gonna to feel a whole lot better when you're not polluting the web with crap just to get links, right? And it's gonna take work, and I'm not gonna deny that at all. So I really wanna talk about how to use social to drive SEO. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a ton of examples on how this is happening. But you've gotta believe in the value of a long-term asset. How many, how many of you have gotten a sale from like a spun article? How many of you even got a click from a spun article, right? Like, that crap's low quality. There's a reason why nobody wants to link to it, write to it, whatever. Ooh, but I got my anchor text, right? Let's find some higher quality ways to do that. Starting with things like long-term assets. Or thinking of the power of the value of one. It's something I want everybody here to think about. I have heard several times from this conference that from other people that they came here and they saw or they met with one person or they went to one session that made it all worth it, right? And hopefully this is that session because if it's not, it's going to hurt, man. It's going to hurt. I don't know about you, but like I remember when I was trying to get somebody to pay attention to me um, it, out there in the, the, the internet, uh -huh, you know, to get one retweet from somebody who you looked up to was huge. That value of that one person saying, yeah, follow this guy's blog was huge and then all of a sudden a bunch of followers come and it's just like it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And I believe when you believe in the power of one, it's how I personally turned talking to 18 people at the Affiliate Summit in 2005 to over that time I figured it's got to be well over 4,000 people that I've spoken with um, at different Affiliate Summits, right? But I had to take those 18 people that invested their time. So think about it that way, right? I don't think any of you are lucky to be here to see me. I feel like I'm lucky to be here to talk to you, right? So those 18 people that I had the chance to speak with and to talk about something I love to, I cherished that, right? I gave them my number. I gave them my email. I said, if you want to contact me or if you're at any point have a question about SEO, 
email me or call me, right? Because I was so glad that somebody wanted to hear about something that I had to say, right? When you bring that kind of fire to something, where it gets back to people like Sean and Missy. And those feedback forms come back in and they go, hmm, interesting. This guy that talked to like 18 people and then I had to fly out the same day because that was the cheapest flight I could get. I did an out and back that day. Um, but you know, so it's like, if you don't believe that you can turn 18 into 4,000, then I can't do anything for you. You might as well just continue checking your email if you're already doing it or start checking your email or go back to sleep. Because if you don't believe that this is doable, now did it happen from 2005 to 2006? No, right? Here we are, it took you guys a while to get me up here, you know what I'm saying, but just playing. No, but seriously, so think about it, right? It's not gonna happen overnight, but I busted my ass. I did a fresh presentation every time. I would save stuff from other presentations and not do it, because I wanted to bring the fire here, partially because I'm, I, I'm just grateful for these guys giving me the opportunity, right? If, if you don't believe in this math, then I can't help you, because the rest of this presentation is gonna ask you and challenge you to think about what you're doing to turn 10 into 10,000. And if you're not ready to do it, then I got nothing for you. What value are you adding? Why does nobody follow you? Because you aren't talking about anything anybody cares about. Because you're not doing anything for anybody else. What do you think? Your content's so great that people are just gonna show up and just, ooh, you're awesome. No, that doesn't happen, right? Why don't you take the one person that follows you or the one person that comments on your blog? Find out what you can do to help them, right? And if you do believe in the power of one touch, which I hope you do, because people aren't leaving yet, um, then you might as well stay. Because from here on out, I'm gonna talk about how you can take that power of one or that value of one touch and make it something exponential. And that's gonna happen on social. And I believe that Google will eventually figure social out. They're really far away from it right now, guys. I mean, they've been on this like paid link trail for years and they haven't figured it out yet. Um, so I really don't believe that they're gonna figure it out soon, but they're getting closer and closer. Do you guys know that 25% of every Google employee's bonus is based on their success in social? 25%, they're gonna get it right, because people aren't gonna get their money, right? Look at this search result. Looks a hell of a lot different than search results did just a year ago, right? How many of you are used to seeing the, uh, the little pictures down here where we've got Matt Cutts and Richard Baxter? How many of you guys see those on the day-to-day -day when you're doing searches? That's still a minority. It's still a minority of this audience, right? So this is just simply if you connect your, uh, your Google account to a bunch of other accounts like back in the day when Google used to bring in Twitter, Twitter, friend feed, delicious, et cetera. What happens is, is Google puts a nice little pretty picture of you next to the result. Right, there and there. So this guy, Richard Baxter, follow him. Wicked smart. I don't even have time to go over something he showed me uh, a month ago at another conference, but it was one of the most genius things I've seen at a conference. He's a Brit, so uh, he might be asleep. No, he's still up. Say hello to him. Uh, follow him, really smart guy. What's really interesting too, have you guys seen these over here? How many of you guys are seeing those over there? Off, all the way off to the right, you're starting to see authors. Even less, right? I don't know how to say this in a more clear way, but like when, you, when I see friends of mine, so Richard Baxter is a friend of mine and a guy who I think is really smart. I am not clicking on this or this. I know what Matt Cutts is gonna say, you know, oh, don't buy links. Um, so we can skip that. And then I'm gonna go to Richard Baxter first. So who cares about ranking one, two, or three, right? Because that's where I'm going. What's also interesting is when you bring in authors of articles here and here, if they are people that you believe or want to follow, you're gonna change the game on click-through rates, but you don't do that overnight. These guys are well known and are showing up here because they've done things to elevate their profile to a level where they show up. So if you're wondering, how the freak did that happen off to the right-hand side? It's something called rel author, um, it's a tag. So it's like the rel canonical tag, it's called rel author. And what it allows you to do is to make sure that anything you post on the web, even if it's not on your site, connecting with your Google profile, We'll actually show your picture next to it. Yoast, uh, if you guys, most of you guys here are probably using WordPress in some way, shape, or form, so I'm not gonna ask you for a hand raise. Um, this guy is a genius when it comes to, to WordPress and SEO. Um, if you don't follow him and you're on WordPress and you care about SEO, do it right now, even before you follow me, because the guy's freaking wicked smart. What's also great is to see his little picture right there, or to see AJ Khan's picture. I didn't even know he authored this piece, but I actually really like AJ. I think he's a really, really smart guy. Um, 
I didn't even know he authored the piece. Just putting his face there and his name increased the click-through rate like that because it's somebody I see value in. And then there's this guy down here, Dave Taylor. Some of you guys might know him. Um, you know, maybe he knows a thing or two. I don't know. It's your call. Um, but again, once you get to a certain level, Google's going to start showing your picture next, but that doesn't happen overnight, guys. You might have to go to 12 affiliate summits, right? You might have to want to every single time bring the fire every time you get a chance to touch anybody who gives a rat's ass about something you care about. You might actually have to do that. Long term, that's the future. Tomorrow, yeah, crappy links still work. So think about it. Think about it yourselves, right? Now, assuming that you don't think that I, I suck at SEO, um, which I hope you don't, um, if you follow me on Twitter and you connect your Google account, uh, your Google account to your Google profile account, if you're searching for anything related to SEO and you see my face next to it, are you more or less likely to click on it? Maybe I haven't sold everybody yet. By the end of the presentation, you're going to have some cool shit, so I know you will be. But think about it, right? So if you think I sound like somebody that knows what I'm talking about, what would you rather read? Some crappy article just sitting up there from any old body when you're trying to go through it? Or would you rather see something with this awesome grill next to it, right? Um, no, but so, like, it just makes sense, right? But you gotta figure out how you're gonna get there. And you get there by turning 18 into 4,000. You get there by turning 100 into 10,000. You don't get there by doing the low quality shortcuts that so many people are doing today. So here's a slide from a click-through rate study. How many of you get those stupid questions? Well, if I rank number two versus three, how many more clicks am I gonna get, right? Um, this is how you answer that question. Just send them a report with a lot of pages so then they stop asking you. But this is actually the best report on click-through rates that I have seen in 13 years. Because most reports about click-through rate, guess what they do, guys? They keep in branded search. How many of you searched for the word Affiliate Summit and clicked on the Affiliate Summit as the first link, right? What does that do to typical click-through rates? When I search for Nike, usually looking for Nike, right? I click on the first listing. So think about it, guys. How many of you have been looking at these click-through rate studies, trying to figure out a way to say, oh, I get 20% at this and 2% at this, and I hear that this is worth 15 times more than that. You're not even thinking about the fact that branded search, hello, most of us are searching for branded, you know, a lot of us are searching for brands. I think something like 30, 40% of searches on the internet are related to brands. Usually we're looking for the brand, click on the branded site. So we, this study stripped all that out, right? which was really smart. So when you strip out all of those branded searches, you're then left with a much more accurate representation of what these rankings and click-through rates look like. Um, I have a link to that in all my links. So again, it's on Twitter. There's just one link there, it has everything. Um, you'll see all the links. So I have the whole report there. So you can print it out and give it to your boss and tell your boss to shut up so you can get back to work and do this stuff. So obviously I'm more likely to click. Think about what it does. I mean, these are people that I've either spoken with or that I, um, or that I know or that I've read their stuff in the past. That's gonna elevate click-through rates. Screw a ranking. The minute Google puts this up, my number one ranking doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. And I'm gonna show you some examples of what happens. And I hope the God, the ex client of ours isn't in here um, when I show it. So, look at this result. See, you guys, were, humans were just, mm, ooh, it's a pretty picture, right? So what happens is, is we look at the result here and the eye is naturally going to go to the, uh, ooh, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday kind of breakdowns, right? You see the reviews and you love that, right? Ooh, somebody else said it was okay. Don't know who those four people are. It could have been the owner of that business's four friends, but four people said it was better than this, right? So we, so, but we, we look at that and we often skip other results. How do you get there? How do you get to show your data in this way? Because if you notice, there's a site above, all the way at the top there, under MLB, the number two ranking below Major League Baseball for Phillies tickets is TicketWarehouse.com. But you know what? They don't have those links, right? A lot of people are going to skip over them. How do you get there? It's simple. It's called structured data. And that's an hour-long presentation in and of itself. And I won't, I don't have that much time. I could talk for a whole other hour. But I know you guys got other things to do, right? So. Structured data is all about like schema.org. You guys have probably heard about that in micro formats. But the other part is trust. So Google doesn't, just think about it. Google's not showing, you know, these guys, if they structure their data, it's not just gonna show up down there all of a sudden. You've also gotta cross a threshold. You've gotta be in Google's circle of trust. So look at that, guys. 
I know, I used to, years ago, I worked on the site that's in the number two spot below MLB. So this is like a real, this is like real, like we did that, right? Um, years ago. And they don't have it. They don't have those results. And it's sad because they have a top ranking that we got for them three, four years ago. I haven't touched the site in four years, but they're not taking full advantage of that ranking because they're not doing things to build trust and to get those other little pretty links below it like all their friends are getting. So what's gonna happen? People are gonna skip over the number two ranking that I got that client below MLB because there's other quality factors here that people go, boom, August 24th, that's the exact one I wanted to go to, click. Versus up here on my listing that I got, well, I gotta click there, I gotta find out if it's available or not, I gotta try to figure out how to browse their site and where the things are, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'd just rather click on the 24th, make it really easy. I'd rather be number three in this position, right, if I can't get the trust. So that client's got no structured data and they've made no investment in building trust. That's what happens when you make an investment in building SEO and then you never add in the trust component. As the search results look more and more like I just showed you, if you don't invest in trust, people are gonna skip over your hard work. If you're really interested in structured data, here's a guy that you should follow. Again, it's in my link, so I won't leave it up there for too long. This guy used to work at the New York Times. He was their head SEO at the New York Times before he started his own firm. He's a genius at structured data. Really high quality stuff. So I would say you should follow Matt um, and then tell him I said hello. All right. So this Google Plus, Google Circles thing, it is a brand new circle of trust, but once you get in it, Google gives you all those extra little goodies to increase your click-through rate. It is not about you building automated robots to look like they're gonna follow you and increase your followership. Are you this person? Are you out there buying Twitter followers? I, I hope to God your business crumbles. That is a crappy way to be. You remember these guys in college or in high school? This was the nerdy dude who never got any girls, so he was old enough to buy the beer for all the 18-year-olds. That's who that is. That's the I'm buying Twitter followers guy. Hey, you girls want beer? You know? That's who that is. Who wants to be that guy? I don't want to be that guy. Never was that guy, for the record. But if I could have been that guy, I wouldn't have wanted to be that guy. But is that you? Is that what you're putting out on the web right now to build your Twitter followers? That's bull. That sucks. Good luck. Are you one of those people buying Google Plus Ones or selling them? Even worse, if, if anybody knows the company in here that's selling the Plus Ones on Google, please just point them out. Just do like the, like that, and I'll just like stop in the middle of the presentation and just start. You guys will hear it all, hopefully the cameras will catch it before I get arrested. Um, but like, is that what you're doing? Like, is that how you're trying to actually build your web biz business? Really? That's crap. How many of you use tools like this to find out who's unfollowing you? I'm fine with that. I think that's fine. But why are you tracking it? What are you gonna do with the data? I know what most of you are gonna do with the data. You're gonna do this. Ooh, you unfollowed me. Oh, pens in you. Sprinkle some weird dust on you. That's what most people do with those tools. Oh, you unfollowed me? Oh, I'll unfollow you. Seriously? It's freaking horrible. That's like so, that's just like so stupid. But I know we all get attracted into that like, oh, well they unfollowed me. Maybe the person that unfollowed you is basically telling you, you're not talking about anything I care about. So maybe you should look at it yourself and go, okay, well, what's causing all these people to unfollow me? Maybe I'm a douchebag. Maybe I spend a lot of time talking about pooping and nobody cares. People follow me to know things about SEO. Once in a while, I can't help it. I'll squeeze in something about my wife or my dog. But like the minute my dog pictures become 90% of my updates, I'm gonna be unfollowed and that's okay. I get it. You're not really that into Coltrane and I am. My dog's name is Coltrane, and she's awesome. I wanted to name her Ella after Ella Fitzgerald, but my wife said, I might want to name a daughter Ella one day. I said, well, then this dog's getting named Coltrane. She's like, but it's a girl. I'm like, yeah, well, Ella's off the table. So I have a girl dog that's a black lab named Coltrane. Um, but like, so if you're gonna follow people that are unfollowing you, don't, when they unfollow you, don't go and get your little like dance, you know, put on your black mask and, 
find them and oh, I'm gonna put pens in them, right? You're hoping somewhere that the person's like, oh, oh, what's that? You know, and you're like, yeah. No, what you wanna do is if you're being unfollowed in mass, realize that you did something, you screwed something up. And don't like do that automated message crap, like, oh, you just unfollowed me. Can you tell me why you don't want it? That's creepy. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Take the time to actually invest in like, okay, well, what was this person following me for? Let me look at their profile, see what they were about. Use tools like that to improve your connections and gain trust. And I believe that that will help you gain SEO results. So now let's get ready to take, start taking notes. Um, Cause I'm gonna give you guys a lot of stuff in a short time. Uh, I need a time check cause I could talk about this shit for hours. Sorry. Um, so here's an example of, a, uh, I love Jeeps. I have an old 88 Jeep Wrangler Sahara with a set of 35s on, the, on it. Um, wouldn't expect that. Yeah, 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 right? Um, so what Quadratech does that is smart. So if, if I could ever work with Quadratech, I would love to. I love clients who are already investing in real assets. That's not article spinning. What they're doing is they're connecting with their community. They're saying, upload a picture of your car, all tricked out to our site. And people love it, and they're eating it up, right? They're doing it in mass, which is awesome. That's a quality asset. I need some water. All right. But they're not using it for any of the things to help get them social movement. How about you actually have people do things like put up a badge on their site all about their Jeep? with all the different products in there. Now I'm getting deep product page links to my product pages with a badge, right? How about I make all these people compete with each other? Whoever gets the most votes this month gets $3,000 in like, you know, or 300 bucks in like Jeep cash. How about as part of their badge, they get to put in their wish list, one product they wish they got, and every month your company picks that one and says, you got the most votes, the most people voted on your rig, you're gonna get what's on your wish list. Adds value. That's not an article spin. So people are doing things like this. I think what's smart is that they are linking to product in here, they're getting deep, they're getting a, a deep links this way, right? But they're not doing anything social. So therefore they don't show the search engines who are moving into a more social world. Hey, I'm, people actually care about this, because they do. These guys have been doing this since 2007. Four years of building an asset that people are uploading their pictures left and right and bragging about their Jeep, but they're not taking full advantage of it. And as a result, people in the circle of trust like Amazon, they get the pretty little reviews that people go to, even though Quadratech is outranking them. Turn social on and you'll get the pretty little reviews too that people like to click on. Especially when Amazon's below you, we all trust Amazon. I order things from Amazon, it comes. How many of you have ever heard of Quadratech before? Not many. Therefore, you're probably like, oh, who is this company? You need every, every ounce of trust that you can get, you want to get. Here's another example. So, from Quadratech's site, they're talking about supporting the Jeep community. And many of you might be like, well, I don't have a company that has a bunch of, you know, worn 9,000 winches laying around. Okay, I got you. How about we try this? What they're doing is uh, they're linking out to organizations who are all about allowing people to off-road. And if you're into off-roading at all, anybody in here actually seriously into off-roading a bit? Hmm, wrong crowd. It's okay. So, there are petitions in this space about how to preserve space and allow people that are responsibly four-wheeling to four-wheel. So they have a petition there. If you guys paid attention to my snowboarder example and helping people when they're sick, um, or they're hurt, you should know exactly what my next slide is gonna be. How about I make buttons for all the different organizations that are supporting Jeepers who are allowed to Jeep on dunes and in swamps or wherever the heck they wanna, they wanna do that. If I'm Quadratech, I'm not just gonna link out to these organizations, I'm gonna go to them and say, hey, well how about I build little buttons for you? And that you can get done cheap as heck, right? How about I build little buttons for you so that your sponsors and people that are signing up for your petition can go put that up on their site. Now I'm getting buttons that say, I support this thing, and this button was built by Quadratech. Now I'm getting links from people that are in the Jeep space on their blogs in a way that doesn't make me feel like crap. Anybody in here in the supplement space at all? I am, I have a client working on the supplement space. Um, yeah, so bodybuilding.com, it's like don't even try to beat them. They've made investments in assets 
like transformation of the week. And when you do that year in, year out, and you've got 52 weeks, think about all the content that's being built. Who doesn't want to like change their body and then be like, yo, check me out, right? Um, like, it's simple. Now, they're not turning on all the social voting and all that that I think they should to gain more trust. But these guys have made investments in assets, and Google is eventually going to reward people for it. And I know in this space, they've definitely been rewarded. They're really hard to beat, aren't they? These guys are everywhere, unless you're one of them. <laughs> you're bodybuilding.com. Awesome, you're kicking, well, you're not really kicking my client's butt, but like we're always like number three like below you on some really big words like jacked that we want. But you're doing a great job, because you know why? My client, I'm begging him and begging him and begging him to make investments like you guys, and it's like, oh, just go get me some more links. I'm like, no, dude, I need to do this. So that is your moat around your rankings. It is your moat, you're protecting it, because so many people don't ever want to put in the hard work to actually do things like that. And then once it starts to take off, it has a mind of its own. It'll just keep going and going and going, right? So if you don't want to put in the hard work, the people that do, they're building a moat around themselves that you'll never be able to get a year from now when article spending stops working. So are you going to wait until Google gets social right? Is that what your plan is? Because it could come tomorrow. Probably not happen. I think we've got about a five year run before Google gets it right. So I'm going to switch gears on you guys. Second way to get some high quality .edu links. Find EDUs that list out scholarships. Long lists of scholarships. Make one. Spend $500 or $1,000 on making a scholarship. There are, I have found, we have a database of 620 some odd sites that list out scholarships when you create them. Many of them are on like k.12s and .edu's. Anybody here not want k.12s or .edu links? Didn't think so. You want those. So instead of doing, oh, how can I spend a thousand bucks with that douchebag that called me? where I could buy those links with the shoe polish guy and the, and the direct TV guy and all that, I could do that. Or I could actually add some value, help send a kid to school, and get the same darn links in a higher quality way. It shocked me one day when I uh, saw my phone ring from, uh, uh, I believe it was USC. USC, University of Southern California, called us. Hey, we're looking to talk to the guy that called us about getting the links up on our site for the scholarship. Bingo, now they're calling us, right? And that's an important distinction. We did not email these people. This comes from knowing your audience. These are people at colleges or high schools, not the most web savvy group. Because they're not that web savvy, you want to call them. You send them an email, zap. So we hired a person for three weeks to sit in our office and call 600 individual places that we knew would list out scholarships and link out to us. We didn't go to like a scholarship listing database. We went to actual EDUs and K.12s that were listing out scholarships on their site. Name the scholarship with your keywords. It is the motorcycle safety scholarship, right? Boom, now I'm getting my motorcycle link with the anchor text I need from a .edu in a way that doesn't freaking pollute the web. People are so lazy, they're gonna use the anchor text you give them. What's the name of the scholarship? It is the bodybuilding.com muscle milk jacked scholarship. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. And we got hundreds of .edu links this way without putting out a bunch of pig crap all over the internet. So another thing that I see, anybody here see competitors of yours buying links in people's blog, blog rolls and winning? I see some heads nodding. Doesn't that freaking suck when you see that? And you're kind of like, am I gonna have to do that? Like, are you really, gonna, Google, seriously, you're gonna make me do that? I gotta buy like blog roll links? No, no, no. All right, so you don't wanna be this guy, you know, with your hands over people, like, ooh, you can't make your bills this month, I'll pay you $25 for a link in your blog roll. No, 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 no. We're gonna change that, right? How about we look at creating badges? I'm big on badges. As long as you don't shove a bunch of unrelated anchor text in them, you will be fine. So one day I was reverse engineering the rankings for SEO Moz, and I looked at this, uh, this badge they had from a page from a website called Lulu. Have you guys heard of Lulu? Self-publishing platform, I believe. Um, you know, I look at the world through a different lens, so I didn't even know what they did, but I saw they were at page rank eight, and was like, how the heck did they get a homepage to link to them that has a page rank eight with a badge. Awesome, okay. I'm gonna show you how to take advantage of people in your space who are using badges and let things go. So we got a little bit of a problem with this badge strategy for them. The Web 2.0 awards were done in 2008. What year is it? Three years have gone by, they haven't updated it, but doing this got them a page rank eight link at some point. Who in here doesn't want a page rank eight homepage link? Thank you, right? So Ram Fishkin, who is an awesome dude, 
He's been too busy in Brazil and growing his company and building tools and raising VC. So what he did is he left all that stuff alone for a while and I found it. Remember that game that like, what was the name of it? Where you could like put the pictures together and you had to like figure out the word. Anybody remember it? I forget what it is. This is obviously opportunity knocking. So let's go make this happen. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So here's how you reverse engineer a bad strategy of any one of your competitors using advanced Google image search. You drop the URL of the actual image into Google. You click search by image right there. And then if you use SEO Moz's tools at all, I think uh, if you use um, even the free version of their uh, Open Site Explorer will give you some of this data. You implement the SERP overlay, so it shows you all the data, and it's also showing you all the places that that badge has been put up, right? So if you find a blogger or a group of bloggers or an industry where you are trying to win, look at the badges they put up on their site, drop it into Google Images, do the advanced search, and Google will show you everyone that has put that badge up on their site. The minute they slip for a year or two, you come out with that badge all over again. Contact all those guys and redo it and grab all their links. It's a great way to kick your competitors' butts, right? And it's a way that's not polluting the web. Anybody here think that's polluting the web? Right? Good, good, I'm glad. Got one no. If you think you're polluting the web with this, I'd love to see what you're doing. All right. You wanna wake up tomorrow and be like, oh snap, Google's like figured out this social thing. And I have made no investment in actually trying to connect with people at a social level. How long are you gonna wait? How long are you gonna buy followers and plus ones? Go for it. Eventually that crap's not gonna work. And who's gonna be left? Guys like bodybuilding.com are gonna be left. And if you are buying followers, who, who the heck knew? Because you're building assets. And that's actually a really important point. And is anybody here from Google? Well, you're probably not going to answer that question now. <laughs> when you build high quality assets, when you go along and do other things that are more aggressive, it looks like maybe that even wasn't them, right? Because I could buy bad links to any of your sites, right? And if Google penalized you when I bought a bunch of crappy .edu links and a network to your site, the whole web would fail. When you build quality assets, it lets you get away with some other things that are a little bit more aggressive. <clears throat> Next. All right, we're we'll gonna have to edit that out of the video because I don't need anybody calling me, telling me that I shouldn't have said that. So connections are always gonna be valuable. Always, and they're becoming more valuable. But really what I mean is strong connections. That you follow me, I follow you crap, not strong. Don't follow somebody because they follow you. Follow them because they add value, right? So what I'm gonna ask you guys is to get ready to build your little army of helpers. It's amazing what will happen when you can combine some data sources and see the links that are just waiting to be attained. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather ask for links from my friends than strangers. My friends will help me out, because I also invest in trying to help them out. Call up a friend and just try to help them out. You'd be amazed what will happen two or three years from now. So if you're starting to think, oh God, how am I gonna get the budget for that? How am I gonna sell my boss on this? It sounds hard, it is hard. Get a new job if your boss doesn't understand that this is the future of search. I mean, I know a lot of people that are hiring. Um, once you have a strong social following, the things you can do that other people can't is tremendous. It's absolutely tremendous. So I'm gonna show you a couple tools that we use and how we use them to piggyback off of our social following. Exportly and Rowfeeder are two of the tools that, uh, that we use. Two of the other tools we use are SEO Moz and Majestic SEO. And I have links to all these on my, on my last tweet, guys, so you don't have to write them all down. Pay attention to this. The beauty of Exportly, you can analyze up to 10,000 followers for free. Who in here has uh, more than 10,000 followers? Yeah. And that's not the like, oh, I was wasted last night, didn't raise my hand. That is the, I don't have 10,000 followers, didn't raise my hand, right? So, you can, so everybody in here, except for like three people, can basically analyze their entire Twitter stream and all their followers for free by just sending out a tweet. What I love about Exportly is it puts it all in a spreadsheet. One big long spreadsheet with every one of your Twitter followers as a, as a row, and then it shows you how many people follow them, how many followers they have, their location, if they've put it in their tweets, all kinds of great stuff, right? And it's free. You just have to tweet out that you used it, but I'll do that for the first time. A little bit of extra credit. If you're a fan of uh, like an email tool like Aweber, who just did a, um, 
an integration with Reportive, you can find tons of other people's profiles once you get one profile. It'll find their LinkedIn, it'll find everything. It's pretty smart, pretty cool tool. But when you take all of the people that follow an account, account, and you take all the linking info for that domain, it creates nerd power. And by nerd power, I want to show you what I mean when I say nerd power. So like this is a typical exportly export. Eh, it's kind of boring. You know, okay, I can see all my followers. Trisha's in the top. Um, I can see, you know, their, how they describe themselves, which means I can now do a search for all their interests to see who should I be reaching out to. Their locations are there. Their URLs, their profiles are there, and then there's a bunch of other information. The beauty of a location, so I was in uh, Madrid, uh, I did the running of the bulls last week, or last month, and, um, and, I, and I was able to use this tool to find all my followers who live in Madrid. And I said, why don't we do an SEO meetup? Adding real value, right? But you gotta put something out there to get those followers in the first place, so that when you travel to some other place, you can find them. This tool made it happen like that, it was simple. Open Site Explorer from SEO Moz, Brings in data, got a little download CSV. The cool thing that they've done recently is they have added in Facebook likes and shares, so you can compare that to your competitors. But it looks like this, and meh, you know, it's a little boring. The nerd power happens when you combine these two things. So think about what we have now. We've got two different data sources. Exportly is gonna show me everyone who follows me, and SEO Moz is gonna show me everyone who links to me. Any, any of my Excel friends in here, if you know what a VLOOKUP is, you now can see every person that follows you but never has linked to you. If you follow me but have never linked to me, hmm, okay, you obviously see some value in what I'm having to write, and you have a URL in your profile, but you're not linking to me. I wanna know that, simple. The beauty is, is the spreadsheet to do this, um, I have in my list of links, so you can just go ahead and click on it, it's the first link on our blog, um, and download the spreadsheet from one of our blog posts, and you can do this. Here's what the magic looks like. Great, so I know that out of 4,278 follow, or out of 4,597 followers that have a URL in their profile, 319 of them from whatever URL is in their profile is actually linking to me. So I take my, pro my follower information, and then I take my backlink information, match the two together and say, well, who isn't linking to me that's following me? The real work is in how do I make that pie chart a little bit more blue, right? That's where I'm gonna work. Because I'm not gonna go out to strangers and try to get them to link to me anymore. I'm gonna start talking to my friends. Because there's thousands of them that aren't linking to me. Which is BS. All right, there's a couple flaws with the tool that we built. Um, sometimes people link to personal sites, sometimes people link to their Google profile page. You know, they don't work at Google, you can't get a link from Google. So when people put in profile or links in their Twitter profile that aren't them, or isn't their site, you know, you can't get a link there. And um, if you comment on a lot of blogs that have do follows, um, it'll throw it off because it'll look like you got a link from them when you really didn't and it's a comment link which Google can see is a comment link. But I still believe it's a great way to get started. We threw in some stupid number about influence rank. I don't like it, I'd rather, we're, our next version of this will just bring in like cloud scores or peer index or something. But what it also allows me to do is to order all my followers that aren't linking to me. Google Analytics is following me, but they're not linking to me. How am I gonna get a link from Google Analytics? Become a GA certified company, right? So we just had three people uh, get Google Analytics certified, so we can get on our way to becoming a GA certified company, so I can check that one off the list, right? The next person on that list is Eric Ward. And here's his page, that he's, he's a stingy mofo. It's funny, for somebody that talks about linking so much, he, just link, he links out to nobody. But, here are the people he links out to. Ooh, Matt Cutts. Mm, I'm not gonna be the next Matt Cutts. Rand Fishkin. Mm, like to, but I don't think that's gonna happen either. Danny Sullivan. Ugh, probably not, right? So then sometimes you look at people that are following you and you say there's really no opportunity here, right? Or you might do a guest interview. You might interview them. People love to link to you when you interview them. That could be a way to do it, right? And the beauty of ordering these people in some kind of an order is now I know where I should spend my time. Next tool, row feeder. Same concept, but row feeder pulls in a search on Twitter. In Excel, who wants to do search.twitter.com and go through and scroll? Mm -mm. Save yourself the time. Use row feeder, also free, up to a certain point. And I put in RT space at Will Reynolds. 
Everyone who's retweeting me brought it into a spreadsheet, took their profile and their URL, and then said, who isn't linking to me that's retweeting me? Think about it. For all the hard times that we put in to try to get links, why haven't we thought, hey, somebody just retweeted me. They have a URL in their profile. Maybe I should contact them to see if they would link to me within days after them retweeting some information that I put on the web. Does that make sense? It's a very logical way to build links, yet we come up with all these convoluted, super serious ways to create crap. If you've actually made the investment in having somewhat of a social following, those people are sitting out there right now waiting to link to you. They're retweeting you. And this isn't bots that you control. This is about real freaking people. That was the simple query I used. This isn't even anything advanced. I've talked about all this stuff, right? And here's what it looks like in our spreadsheet, which again, you guys have. The one problem is it's a going forward metric. So anybody that had linked to me previously isn't in there. Um, so it's a going forward, because I know Rand's linked to me and some other people up there. But the beauty again is now within the spreadsheet, I can say who follows me but hasn't retweeted me. It's a great way to start saying, well, how can I get those people to retweet me? Because once you retweet me, you've sent me a trigger that says, I know you're interested in something that I just put out there. When I know you're interested in something I put out there, that's the best time for me to try to connect with you, right? Hey, how about we do a guest post? How about I interview you? We can skip through that. How am I doing on time? Because I, I have no concept of time when I start talking about SEO, I apologize. How am I? Okay. Oh God, I'm way off, all right. Speed round. Damn it, I practiced this like seven times. <laughs> All right, so let's speed round this. All right, so if you want links from people who are ranking for keywords you're ranking for, what you do is you pull exportly, uh, you pull all your followers in and you pull their URLs out, right? You pull out the URLs of all your followers. You then import all of your ranking or all the rankings for a keyword, top 50, top 100, and you cross reference the two with the VLOOKUP. What you'll end up getting out of our spreadsheet is this. So what it's showing me is, see those top five guys or girls all at number one? They all work at SEO.com. They have the number one ranking for search engine optimization firm, and they're following me. The minute I get wind of the fact they're doing a guest post or a roundup or anything, I want to get on their radar because they're outranking me for a keyword that I want to rank well for. Why not try to get a link from people who are trying to rank for the same keywords you are? They're building a profile that shows all the same keywords that you want to rank well for. And this is in our spreadsheet. You can dump all this stuff in. The scraper, I think, is already built in there. It should work um, pretty quickly. Ethan, follow him. I have a link to that. All right. Article spinning. I hate it. Um, if I told you to spend $250 for an article, you'd probably tell me I was crazy. Spend $250 for an article, but just don't spend it with anybody. Spend it with someone like this. This is an author page on Amazon. This is a person that's wrote a book. If you know somebody that's written a book, they are wicked promotional. Do not do this and spend $250 with these people. Spend $250 with the person that's actually a real person and has some muscle and can push it and has a social following. How many Twitter followers do you think these 18 guys have? How many Twitter followers does an author on Amazon have? Probably a ton more. Here's how you find them. Site colon Amazon. Then you have to put in quotes, most recent blog posts from and then you drop in your target keyword. It'll show you every author that is posting blog posts to Amazon. They're writing blogs. They have a book on Amazon. Does that sound quality to you? It sounds quality to me. It sounds a lot better than the pig crap people are putting out there. Skip, skip, skip. Call them up on Google Voice. You have a Google Voice number, have them call in. You hit the number four, bing, you start recording the call. Use some Google tools, get some questions based on recent trends, like this. So do your search here, find some recent trends in the last 90 days or so, ask them questions about that stuff. If you talk to somebody for a half hour, 90% of the time you'll come out with six to eight blog posts that they can put up on their sites, they can write about, they can link to. You press four, it records it. You then drop it into these folks, lovely folks at SpeechPad. You pay a dollar per minute for them to transcribe the entire thing. So what you did is you spent $250 of someone's time. You called them up and asked them a bunch of really relevant questions. Think about it, you called me and asked me some questions about SEO, I'm gonna talk for hours. I'm gonna give you so much content you're not gonna know what to do with it. Ask me to write it, I don't have time. Ask me to talk about it, I do. You invest a half hour of your time, talk to them. You send it to SpeechPad, they transcribe it. You got eight quality blog posts for 250 bucks from a real person who really has some muscle in the space and who is selling a book and who has Twitter followers and will tell them to follow you. That's quality. All right. 
That wasn't even the speed round. All right, so lastly, got about two minutes for this. Um, Suggester is a really cool tool. It's at ProMedia Corp Suggester. It's in my list of links, don't worry about writing it down because I gotta go really fast. It'll give you all the ideas that you should be writing content to. Usually what you do is you then drop it here and you look at search volume. I'm gonna challenge you. If you're doing PPC, don't do that. What you wanna use is use your search query report out of PPC. If I look at all the words people are searching for and find volume, the next level is to look at the search query reports. Because what you're gonna get out of there is conversions. Screw getting, tr screw getting a link. How about if you actually wrote content that you knew was gonna convert based on what words your core keyword was being matched to in the first place? How about you write content that the clicks actually are quality clicks? Nobody clicks from a spun article on article-directory-my-mother.com. Nobody clicks on that link and they surely don't buy. These people do. And I think that's probably gonna be all the time that I have. I'll put up the rest of the slides so that you can get them. Ooh, okay, one more thing. Can I please? Please, 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 all right, all right. Okay, because this is really good. How many people in here have been blogging for years? Years? Like three, four years more? Cool. It is inevitable that you've got stuff on your blog that is broken. You have links that just don't exist anymore. And if you're a quality blogger, not a crap blogger, but a quality blogger, then you found some value in something at some point and you linked to it, right? But it no longer exists. It's broken. Inst I have a link in my set of links to a WordPress plugin that will email you anytime a link breaks on your site. If you've been linking out to quality stuff in your blog, this will alert you every time that broken link happens. Then think about what you can do with it. You can buy the domain if it expired. You can rebuild the resource that you linked to at one point, and this only happens if you're a quality blogger. Somebody built a great resource, you linked to it and they, they, it went away. They relaunched their site and it's broken now. You then drop that tool into a backlink checker, find all the people who had linked to that piece of content at some point who were probably also pretty quality and yank their freaking links and go rank for your keywords, right? And then let's all go make Darth a really, really sad man. I am Will Reynolds and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.